Hey, it's Dr. Anderson here. Um, still getting through this COVID-19 stuff. Still plugging away, still teaching, and still talking about records. So, you know, um, a couple people asked me a couple weeks ago that, uh, you know, why don't you share a little bit about yourself online and, and talk about some of the records you love. And that's, that's great. I, got, I love a lot of records. And during this time, I've spent a lot of time with YouTube as I work listening to a lot of records. Now, you know, it's, it's not as good as an album or a CD, but it's pretty convenient when you're in front of a, when you're in front of a computer. And I have to say, I've spent a lot of time with comedy records. Now, there was a time in the 1970s, 50s, 60s, way back when, <laughs> when comedy records were a big deal. Uh, they were pretty top-selling genre of LPs. They were expected much in the same way that music was. It never sold as much as music, with a couple exceptions. Um, Vom Meter's first family record, which is a record you can find for a dollar just about anywhere in the U.S., one of the best-selling records of all time. It was a parody of the Kennedys, and for those of us who grew up during that period, even after the Kennedys uh, left office, that was uh, something you found in a lot of people's homes. Um, but by far, some of the most popular records, you know, were, were, were done by people like Richard Pryor and Bill Cosby. Uh, I just brought a few out, and I'm going to talk about one artist in general, but uh, just a few, you know, here and there. Perhaps my favorites are, are by the likes of, uh, you know, like Reach over here, Steve Martin, and I'll talk more about him at some other time. Monty Python, for a long time, when you couldn't get the videos... They were hard to get in the U.S. or hard to see. They were on PBS only, and they didn't run them all the time. You had the records. Uh, the Fire Sign Theater, another act I will talk about. Uh, talk about the talk about. They they've been forgotten by a lot of people, but they shouldn't be. They were terrific. Um, the Smothers Brothers. Um, there's a lot written about the Smothers Brothers, a very controversial television show. Uh, start off as a folk parody act and, and continue to this day somewhat. Um, I have all almost all their records. I, I think they're terrific. Um, one of the most important records um, in the 1960s, it literally saved Warner Brothers records, Warner Brothers music. Um, the Button Down Mind of Bob Newhart uh, basically established him as a premier comic. And he had several television shows, too, which were significant hits. Uh, in the 70s, The Bob Newhart Show, and in the 80s, Newhart. Just, just a terrific preview of what would, what would be to come. But the, the person I want to talk about the most today is Stan Freeberg. Uh, this is the Rhino box set that was released about, oh, 15, 16, I don't know how many years ago. It was in the early, oh, shoot, it was in 1999. Uh, this is old. It came with a VHS, which I've 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 only played once, and I played the CDs multiple times. So, uh, what's interesting about this is that all those records I showed you are the peak of comedy uh, for records in, on records. After the 1980s and towards the end of the 1980s, cable comes in and it's easier to see a lot of these routines and hear a lot of these uh, hear a lot of these see a lot of these sketches. Uh, there was a time, like, for instance, when Saturday Night Live came and left and you never saw it again. You'd talk about it. Maybe there'd be a rerun. But before cable, it was pretty much hit or miss. So if you really wanted to enjoy those things again, there was really only one medium, and that was the record. And Stan Freeberg comes at a time in the 1940s and 50s when the LP record is starting to grow. Um, and I'm going to talk about one of his LPs in particular, but he was also a singles artist. And I've included a lot of those singles in a playlist below. Uh, some of those singles are, 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 are things like uh, St. George and the Dragonette. Actually, I didn't include that one. I included Hound Dog. And I included his Little Red Riding Hood parody of Dragnet. Um, he was a really amazing artist. He died in 2015 at age 88. And he had a varied career that began as a voice actor for, with, with, on Warner Brothers cartoons. Uh, he found his way into films, radio, and television. He eventually created an advertising company. And I have put a lot of those ads in this playlist. Not all of them. Partially because, and I learned those ads from this box set, the Stan Freeberg video box set. Thank the Lord for YouTube. There's a ton of those available. They're really witty. They're really funny. Um, 
He went on to win uh, 21 Clio Awards. That's the top award for advertising. He also won three Emmys and a Windsor McKay Award for animation. Now, like I said, I loved his records. I loved uh, his records. I, I mean, I really do. And perhaps his most infamous before the one I'm going to talk about is John and Marsha. That, that single, um, it's composed literally of two voices who just say two words, John and Marsha. Uh, one's an ostensibly female voice, one's an ostensibly male voice, we never know. And they cover the, the, the full range of their emotions. That is that is in the playlist. Um, it's it's an amazing little record. Um, and in fact, it, it was so popular that uh, Mad Men makes a, a, a nod to it, I think in the first or second season. It's, it's a very, very funny record. But his masterpiece is this. Uh, Stan Freeberg presents the United States of America, Volume 1, an original musical review created specifically for stereo. Important point here, stereo has kicked in. This is a 1961 record? No, is it 60 record? It's created for stereo. It was meant to be sat down, listened to, and enjoyed. And you can still find this in thrift stores all over America for real cheap. It's, it's worth a buck or two, maybe more. Um, and it's considered by many one of the greatest comedy records ever produced. And in 2019, it was recognized by the Library of Congress as, as one of those records that's worthy of preservation by the National Recording uh, Registry. The beauty of this record is it parodies all kinds of conventions of the middle brow musical genre uh, review, middle, or middle brow review album, <laughs> excuse me, I've only two cups of coffee today, middle brow musical review album of the day, and produces a very subversive take on American history that includes uh, uh, tags on Columbus, token uh, racial relations. Uh, there's even a reference to McCarthyism in there in the Red Scare. And in the record itself, it's not just Stan Freeberg. He's assembled a significant cast of actors. And the most famous actor in this is June Foray. June Foray, you know June Foray, but you don't know her. June Foray was the voice of Rocky the Flying Squirrel, Natasha of Natasha and Boris fame, and the great Cindy Lou Who of, in, from The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Um, June Foray, when uh, when Mel Blanc was said uh, was said to have said to, uh, asked about June Foray, they said, "Well, is she uh, is she sort of like the female Mel Blanc?" And his reply was, "No, Mel Blanc is the male June Foray." That's how respected she was as a voice actor, uh, none better, and she's terrific in it. Uh, what I really love about this record is it feels like, uh, to me, a kind of a a kind of poke in the eye of official American history. I always call this sort of a West Coast American history record. Now, I, I grew up in Arizona. When you grow up in Arizona, Washington, D.C. and New York City might as well be the moon. Philadelphia, you're never going to go there. It just doesn't happen. And 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 uh, I remember hearing this record and going, that's really funny because they teach you this American history, and it's it starts on the East Coast and goes out West. Whereas if you grow up in, out West, you, you know that there was plenty of history there but it's never taught going west to east. It's it's one of those narratives that kind of kind of drives you nuts. And Stan Freeberg is born and raised in L.A. He's he's from Pasadena. He's a Los Angelino, and he's he gives that that version of history, that west to or that east to west version of history, a bit of side eye throughout the whole thing. And well before the likes of Howard Zinn. Uh, he is sending up American history. Not that Howard Zinn was a comedian. Howard Zinn's a very, very interesting, um, radical historian. But he's dedicated to an alternative history uh, take on, on U.S. history. He, he points out some very early uh, misconceptions about who discovered whom. Uh, he does it funnily. He does it with humor. And it's great. The, the second thing about this, and this is one of the things I find really interesting, is that this is a concept record. Long before Dark Side of the Moon or Sgt. Pepper's, this is a record that's conceived. It's conceived with a number of conceits about understanding American history, what makes it funny, what makes it ridiculous. Uh, also, what the American uh, middle brow musical was like at the time. Um, it's a very, very smart, brilliant record, and I'm really glad that the Library of Congress has decided to, uh, to, uh, to put it in their registry so that we don't lose it. Anyways, uh, that'd be my record of the week. It's it's hokey. If if you're uh, if you're uh, an audience today and you hear this record and you go, it's kind of silly. It is kind of silly, but it was kind of silly then too. And it also pointed out how hokey things were then. Um, I love it, and you know I, I'm not the only person. Steven Spielberg loves it. Paul McCartney loves it. 
there's a lot of fans of this record and i hope if you get a chance you can just pull up uh the clips i have on youtube and uh and take some time with it i think you'll really enjoy it okay um if you have any suggestions uh you can send them to me at tjandders at ou.edu um got lots of records to talk about plenty to go through um, this is not about finding the obscure. It's just sort of about finding something that I think I love because I love you and I'm missing all of you guys, all of my students, all of my peers, all of my colleagues, all the staff, everybody who helps us out at ODU, everybody who cleans up after us, thank you. Everybody who helps prepare for us, thank you. I miss you all and I'll talk to you later.